Well, it seems to be snowing again, and uh, it's late February. Weird. Welcome to this car wash. So today is going to be interesting. I'm on my way to court right now in regards to that it's loud. In regards to that interesting situation that's been going on since October with getting pulled over and not having a license and all that stuff. So anyways, um, I'm headed over there now and uh, well, I'll explain afterwards, but I think this is going to be really interesting. <laughs> um, I don't want to jinx it, but I think things might go in my favor. So anyways, I'll check in with you in a little bit. Car wash. I did, Your Honor. Um, at this point, Mr. showed clear efforts to get this taken care of as soon as possible. He did in fact come back to the police department not even two hours after the citation was issued to get his license fixed. He also mentioned that due to his um, disability that it would cause a lot of issues to him from driving. He's not able to take public transportation in his vehicle is the only way he's able to get around. So based on those two factors, I believe that the citation should be dismissed. Works for me, okay. We are, we're finally done with this whole thing that's been going on since October. I'm trying to figure out how to explain this, but uh, basically the officer said that he wanted to dismiss the ticket and um, that's what happened. Now in Oregon, municipal courts and traffic courts are a little bit different than other places. In this particular circumstance, the judge actually does not have the power to dismiss any traffic citations. So basically it comes down to the officer either not showing up or saying that they want to dismiss it or whatnot. Um, in this case, things seemed a little bit strange because typically that happens before you get to court and we schedule everything and everyone has to use their time or whatnot. I mean, don't get me wrong, I'm, I'm glad everything was resolved, but um, yeah, it was just kind of an interesting scenario. Um, the officer did mention as well that um, due to, that if I wasn't able to drive, basically, it would affect my living situation and whatnot, um, which everything we said to the judge was basically irrelevant because the judge didn't render any decisions. It was just the officer saying, hey, um, I want to, um, uh, what's the word, revoke, uh, Dismiss. I want to dismiss this ticket. And I guess on their end, it completes the paper trail loop. Anyways, I, I'm not gonna go too much into it, but what we're gonna do now is I found a new electronics recycler that has a bunch of like enterprise and business workstations and computers and stuff like that. I'm working on replacing a computer for some of that I know. And I think we're gonna head over there and take a look. They've got a bunch of like uh, random Dell mini workstations and all that. And they're like a hundred bucks and less. So I think we're gonna go over there and I'm going to buy a computer to monitor and then take it back to the bus and work on getting all of their data transferred over. So anyways, um, I think it's just now setting in, kind of a bit of a weight lifted. Um, because like I said before, um, driving with no valid op, uh, by the way, that video is linked up above with the explanation of all this, but long story short, the DMV was closed because of the worldwide weirdness. And when they reopened, they told me you had to make appointments and I made an appointment. It was canceled, made another appointment. And all this time I was expired and the DMV was like, don't worry about it. You can drive without a valid op. So anyways, um, let's go build some computer stuff and uh, I'm going to get some coffee and food. All right, so place is right over here. I have never been to this place before, but the previous recycler that I used to use is kind of near downtown Portland, but recently their prices have not been super good or whatever. These guys have been spamming the hell out of Craigslist, um, which ordinarily, eh, whatever, but I noticed their price is really good. So let's see what they have in here. I'm not looking for anything specific, just a computer that can do internet and word processing. Sony noises. All right, let's see what they got. All 
uh, this is one of those places that's really dangerous for me to go. Um, I got a computer back here. It's one of those Optiplex workstation things, 23 inch monitor. And because I have a problem, a Surface Book. Um, I think someone sat on this one. You can see it's a little bit bent here on the corner, but everything here comes with a six month warranty. Um, so, eh. Anyways, um, started pouring rain again. I think it's time to head back to the bus and uh, set some of this stuff up and start transferring data and things. Um, don't have a lot of space in the bus, so I'm trying to get this project done as soon as possible. And the headliner on this van, I need to get some... I was using tech screws. I need to get some of that um, aerosol 3M contact adhesive, I think. Okay, anyways, um, 2.30, let's get back before there's traffic. And then there was traffic. I guess it's construction, but whatever. Good Lord, that was a lot of driving. That was 174 miles total today. Um, I think we're gonna fix up this McDonald's coffee here just a little bit. And yes, I have gone back to the Japanese coffee in a can, the J Street coffee shots. They seem to get the job done. So we'll just dump that in here. Augment that with a bit of whatever this is. And top it off with this. <sighs> okay. Um, I'm going to chill out for a couple minutes, take care of some things, and then we're going to get both of the computers set up and see if we can transfer these people's data over. Um, it had with... Well, I'll just wait till I get it set up. I'll be right back. All right, some amount of time has passed, and uh, we have computers set up here. Uh, by the way, the Surface Book was $50 because someone sat on it. It works fine, but the bottom of the chassis is ever so slightly bent, but seems to function just fine. Um, so we've got this old gateway all-in-one from like 2011 or something. I had to upgrade it to Windows 8.1 because it had Windows 8 on it. And now I'm running a file history backup on that. We're going to use that to transfer over to this new machine. And uh, yeah, computer stuff. It's a thing. I would like to see if I can find a case for the Surface Book though and use just the tablet part of it. Um, I've been looking around on eBay for like a kind of a large Windows tablet style machine, but uh, yeah, I don't know. We'll see what's out there. Seems like kind of an interesting thing maybe. Well, I just went and grabbed some groceries because I'm terrible at planning ahead and didn't look at the weather. And, uh, well, anyways, this should hold me over for a week or so until the snow starts melting. I do, however, need to go get some more pellets. I only have one bag left. And it's supposed to get down into the teens tonight, I think, or tomorrow night or something. So should probably go get that taken care of while the roads are still drivable. Drivable. Once again, Oregon is weird. Uh, an inch of snow will shut down the city. I'm fine driving in it, but it's all the other people out there that don't understand uh, physics and whatever causes car crashes. I don't know. Um, I'm gonna get this put away and then go get some pellets. It does appear to be snowing and apparently I left the lift out. Um, I need to take care of that right now. We don't need yeah, as something. Actually, I think I have a broom. Yeah, I, I'm almost done with the computer project. We got most of the data transferred. I'm just getting little things set up here. Got a broom over there. I'm gonna try and sweep some of the... Actually, I guess I can put this thing away now. I think I'm done with this. By the way, um, the reason I'm doing this computer project and everything, well, one, someone needed some help, but two, <laughs> I'm getting paid like enough to cover like over half the rent on the warehouse next month. I don't know why, but you know, hey, if they want to upgrade from this thing to something better, I'm all for it. Uh, so yeah, let's get this, uh, get this lift situation dealt with here. Not sure whose idea it was to leave the lift deployed when it's very clearly snowing outside. Um, hmm. 
I think I'm gonna have to go out there to deal with this. That the end stop plate's in the way. Yeah. I'm just glad I don't live somewhere where it's constantly snowing because this would get old in a hurry. I just want to get most of this off of there because it's just going to drip into that luggage bay, which is fine, um, but it would be nice to limit the amount of water that's going in there, roughly. Okay. Okay. There's uh, we've got a heater down in there now and also a big blower to get that thing all dried off. So I think uh, we should be good. It should dry off in like an hour or so. Well, looking outside here, we might actually get some significant amounts of snow tonight. Uh, that's not a shrub, that's a tree that blew over by the way. But yeah, we seem to have a little bit of buildup. Okay, random update. So remember this, uh, uh this lights, mm. hang on, gotta change this lighting. Remember this Victron 24 volt charger we got a few months ago? I've actually been using this thing to charge my chair, my uh, 2021 F3, ooh, lighting. Anyways, I've been using this to charge my chair for about six months now, and it actually works really well. So it's got, you know, the 110 volt thing that goes in. And I just took apart the cable that it had and put an XLR connector on it. This is actually not one of the good XLR connectors. I found some that are really good and can handle easily like 10 to 15 amps. I will link those down below in the Amazon affiliate links. Uh, they're Nutric knockoffs, but they're really good. This is not one, unfortunately, so it gets kind of warm. But I said I would do an update on this thing. The only main problem with this thing, and the reason I'm not recommending it for everyone to use, is... It is a smart charger and it has data logging and everything, which is awesome, but there's one flaw. You have to push this button to restart the cycle every night when you plug your chair in. Otherwise, it just goes back into float mode or whatever it was doing. It'll basically resume the previous charging session, even if you unplug it and plug it back in. So you can see here we've got the blue light, meaning it's on, and the green light, which means it's like done charging. You have to press this button to reset it. Now you can see it turns orange. If I walk away and leave this for 10 minutes, it's gonna go back to green. So that's the only... Yeah, I just mounted it to the ceiling because it was convenient. That's the only problem with this thing is you have to remember to hit that button, otherwise it's not gonna charge your batteries properly overnight. I've talked to Victron or emailed with them and apparently there's not a way around that. I will still put a link to that charger down below. I think it works really well. I've been using it with the Volt Pro batteries Volt, yeah, the new Volt Pro batteries, it works fine with. Um, it's got different charging profiles in there. If you do get this and you have a new Permobile with the Volt Pro, I'm saying that a lot, batteries, um, use the profile that's called High. There's Normal and there's High. There's some reconditioning modes that I would not mess with, honestly. Um, those are kind of a niche thing and you can damage your batteries if you use that mode. But with the Bluetooth app and everything, it seems to work good. It's a reasonable price. Victron's quality. Um, I don't know what the warranty is, but it's, you know, super good. So, anyways, a uh, quick update on this thing. I've had it in my notes to talk about forever, but I just haven't gotten around it till now. So, anyways, that thing seems to work good. Oh, one other thing. I mentioned uh, monopore cables. I got these little switches delivered. I put them on the gift list. So, I think real quick, I'm going to, well, one, explain what I'm talking about, and two, we're going to make up a cable just to give you guys an idea of the kind of adaptive stuff you can do if the stock buttons on your joystick don't work. Or, also, I am gonna make a separate video about this, but also, a fix you can use in case your little um, toggle switch breaks off of your joystick. These little guys right here, they tend to break off sometimes when things happen, and it can take a long time to get things replaced. So, I'm gonna link all the parts down below that I'm using for this, but um, yeah, it'll be a good alternative for that. Or also, if you don't, you know, can't reach up here and whatnot. Um, anyways, let me get some stuff set up. Impromptu workbench setup. I previously, well, I briefly mentioned these in a previous video. Ooh, they come with heat shrink. But I had ordered these cables from DigiKey. These are the mono port cables and pretty much all rehab wheelchair joysticks are gonna have these ports on the bottom. These cables are pretty long, so we're gonna cut them down. 
But I threw these little switches on the gift list, and thank you to the person that bought those. These are a nice tactile, like, clicky switch, and they have some adhesive on the back. So basically what we're gonna do is mash these two together and plug it into the chair and just give you a basic idea of a mod that you can do um, for your chair. You know, if you need, um, if it's hard to flip those toggles or once again, if they're broken off or something like that. But let's go ahead and cut this stuff down and uh, get, the, get one of these things made up. But this first one, we're gonna make extremely short. So I'm gonna cut this right here. Yeah, these were like maybe a buck 79 or something like that each. They're really nice right angle connectors and they have two conductors inside with some shielding. Which, I mean, shielding isn't 100% necessary, but I like to do it on anything wheelchair related just because, you know, reasons. Okay, there we have our two wires. The shielding is not gonna connect to ground. Once again, wheelchairs do not have a chassis ground and you do not want to attempt to attach any power circuits or anything like that to the chassis or chair. So we're just gonna cut that off. Strip these real quick. Okay, let's grab the soldering iron, connect these two together, and uh, it's as simple as that. I do still need to get a proper like soldering iron or soldering station or something like that. This thing will work for now. I don't necessarily recommend it. Um, people laugh at me when I do fine electronic soldering using a Weller 140 watt, one of these. Go ahead and throw some heat shrink on here just because it came with it. And uh, the coloring doesn't really matter on this. We're just basically clicking a button. So you can tie these together pretty much however you want. But simply because I have obsessive compulsive ten ten tendencies, we put the red to the red and the black to the black. Once again, really does not matter. Okay, that will do. Ooh, let's not uh, let's not solder our camera. This is just sort of a quick and dirty illustration of how, how this works. I would definitely build these a little bit differently. And I've also been pondering building some versions of these and selling them in the web store potentially, but I'm just mentioning it in this video. So, uh, you know, you guys can see there's some options for stuff like this and we'll just give this heat shrink a little shrinkiness or whatever um i just realized i screwed up see this thing we just soldered i just connected two of these buttons together um what i wanted to do was connect it to this so um take two i guess ah, i forgot heat shrink Whatever, we'll just tape the crap out of it. All right, take two, we have the thing made. There is a clicky button and a mono port. Let's connect it to the chair. Oh look, it's a joystick. So on the back of these, uh, just realized I should probably show that, hang on a second. So on the bottom of these joysticks, there are a couple of ports here. And as you might be able to see, one of them has a power logo and that's the one that turns the chair on and off. Then the other one here can be programmed for other things, but I think it is profile by default. I forget which one it is by default, but um, let's pull these little caps out so we can plug this in. They're just these little plasticky, they're just these little plasticky things. And we'll just plug our cable into the power one here. There we go. Tucks away there pretty nicely. Okay, that has been plugged in. Now, if we press the button, the chair should just turn on and off. Chair off. Chair on. Let's move it to the other port. I'm curious what it's set up to by default. Okay, let's press this. Ah, so this is basically the other function. Uh, like if you push up on your power switch, it's gonna cycle through all of the different things on your chair. And you could plug two of these in at the same time. My thought was though, we could just stick these right here with the adhesive or back somewhere on your armrest or maybe down here. I don't know. 
but it just seems like a really inexpensive version of this. Again, you can buy these on Amazon, but they're like, I don't know, looks like our wires might be kind of pulling out there a little bit. Well, I, I haven't tested the durability of these switches, but just for now, um, there's no reason to spend like 70 or 80 bucks on a switch like this. And I'll link all this stuff down below. But anyways, I just wanted to show the basic concept of that real quick. And these will have their own dedicated video at some point. I'm still going through and kind of deciding which of these switches are decent and which ones are not. But the tactile, the tactile feedback on this one is kind of nice. Eh, anyways, potato cam again. As you can see, it's slowly becoming winter out there and it's almost March. But anyways, I think we're going to call that good for now. Um, hopefully you enjoyed the video today. And um, I'm never sure what to say at the end of the videos. Oh, yeah. All the Amazon affiliate links for everything we talked about will be down below. If you have any questions, comment down below. I know we covered a lot of stuff. Um, if you do try out any of those little tactile switches, um, these things here, or if you come across anything that you've used that works, this is just a random one I picked on Amazon, uh, leave your thoughts down below. Victron Charger back there, if you have any questions about that, same thing, comment below. Um, I'm not trying to lean into the whole and leave a comment. I, there's, we just talked about a lot of stuff and discussions. So, anyways, I'll catch you guys tomorrow on the live stream. It will definitely be here on the bus because weather. Um, see you guys then.